Today on the Home Winemaking Channel, we're going to talk about improving the mouthfeel in a young wine by getting a better handle on glycerol. I first covered the subject of glycerol on my Patreon page, so if you haven't checked that out yet, be sure to swing by at patreon.com slash makewine. During a wine fermentation, the yeast produces alcohol and CO2 in almost equal amount. So it's about 47 to 48% of each of those by weight. But second to those two things in production is going to be glycerin or glycerol, which it can produce at anywhere from on average, say 0.4 to 0.9% or four to nine grams per liter, or even all the way up to about 12 or 13 grams per liter or you know, 1.2 or 1.3%. And when you think about all these things we add to wine, we're usually talking in parts per million. Glycerin is in wine at up to 12,000 or 13,000 parts per million. So it's pretty abundant in wine terms. And glycerin by itself is, it's colorless, it's odorless, and it's, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it and a really high kind of syrupy consistency. So it really contributes to the mouth feel of that wine and it also helps to kind of, you know, round out the rough edges of a wine. So if you've got a young wine, it can be often a little harsh, um, especially if it's got pretty high tannin or relatively high acid. So things like glycerin kind of help to balance that out. You have some control as a winemaker as to how much glycerin is produced in that fermentation. So the choice of yeast is going to make a little bit of a difference. The Some of the low producers are going to be like your D21 or RC212. Where on the other end of the spectrum, you get into things like um, BDX, the Bordeaux Red is a relatively high producer. EC1118, one of the yeasts I really like to use is from Renaissance, it's Muse, it's a pretty high glycerol or glycerin producer. So that in itself can help create a, sometimes you'll use some of those yeasts, you'll think the wine has almost a, a sweetness to it, but it can still be bone dry and produce that. Now, within each yeast, so say you, you choose your yeast, the way you ferment can again, kind of push it closer to the high end or, you know, say plus or minus a gram or so per liter of glycerol. So things that will encourage high glycerol production would be things like a high sugar must. And the reason that is, is because um, the reason the yeast cell produces glycerol is to help balance out the osmotic pressure. So when the must has really high sugar and you've got this really low sugar watery liquid inside the yeast, it wants to pull that through the cell wall membrane. So the yeast produces glycerin inside that cell to balance out that osmotic pressure and reduce the amount of osmosis, transferring the liquid rapidly to the high concentration side of the, the whole thing. The next thing that could help increase the amount of glycerin, and I'll just standardize now and just strictly start calling it by glycerin, it's gonna be the fermentation temperature. So fermenting a little bit warmer can encourage more glycerin. Next would be use of complex yeast nutrients like Fermade K. And I'm not a biochemist, so I don't know exactly why using something like Fermade K could increase. It could be something like the yeast hulls that are used in nutrients like that, which could bring a little glycerin with them. But using a complex nutrient like that versus just your standard diammonium phosphate can increase the amount of glycerin. Some studies have shown that that musts with a little bit of a higher pH will produce a little bit higher glycerin. 
Another thing that could affect the production is gonna be the amount of sulfur dioxide or SO2 in the must. And a must with really, really high SO2 can produce pretty substantial amounts of glycerin. And all these things are pretty important, especially if you're a, at a winery where you don't really have the liberty to just add it. Um, but at home, you do have the ability to um, just kind of fine tune a wine before it goes into the bottle by adding a little bit of glycerol, which you can get in food grade glycerin. You can find this stuff online. I'll put a link to it. Um, some of your big winemaking supply shops will also offer it. It's generally considered to be non-fermentable, so you don't really have to worry too much about stabilizing, like if you were to try to round out that wine by back sweetening, you would have to do. The amount of glycerin that I would use is gonna be somewhere around in the range of say, um, 40 to 75 or 80 milliliters to a five or six gallon batch of wine. And you really don't wanna over shoot it particularly because if the wine you're thinking it's pretty close to being ready to bottle it's pretty good but it's just coming off a little tiny bit harsh um, particularly in terms of tannin and acid sure you can round that out with glycerin which I will do in extreme cases but it's also going to naturally sort of round itself out as those short chain harsher tannins kind of start to link with other tannins and become your kind of longer chain, smoother tannin. If you do decide you're gonna add glycerin to a wine, it is hard to mix because it is the consistency, like I said, of almost like a syrup. So what I'll do is I'll pull a sample of the wine and I'll mix, I'll pre-measure a guess at how much I wanna add and I'll mix it in with that wine and make sure I fully dissolve it as much as possible before mixing in with the wine that I'm gonna be um, adding it to. And you also wanna make sure that you've racked that wine off of any lees because you don't really wanna re-stir all that stuff back into suspension when you're getting really close to bottling. I hope that's pretty helpful for you. It's just another nice little tool to have in your winemaking kit and it can really, really make the difference from a pretty good to a really, really good wine. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to click subscribe below and swing by my website, smartwinemaking.com. Thanks for watching.